Hi guys, welcome back to another Cassandra tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue to look at CQL. We're going to look at a couple of different features of CQL that we haven't covered in our previous videos. We're going to look at timestamps. We're going to look at TTLs or time to lives. We're going to look at how we can store sets and lists in Cassandra. And we're also going to look at secondary indexes, which we can use to access data using something that's not part of the primary key. So one thing we can do in Cassandra is we can check the right time of when data was last written to a specific column in Cassandra. For instance, for this row here, BMW one sports car, we can check what the timestamp was for the last time the car model was edited or entered for that row. So in order to do this, we use a select statement. In this case, we want to specify what columns we want to return data from for the rows that match our query. We want to get car make, and we want to return car model. But we also want to return the right time for the car model column for the matching rows. So in order to do that, we type right time. We give the column name, car model again. And then we want to give the table from which we want to select the data from as before. So from employee by car make. So we can run that query and we should return the car make for the rows that match our query. In this case, we're selecting all the rows. We won't return the ID as we didn't specify it in our select statement. We will return the car model as we had specified it. And we will also return the last write time for the car model column for each row, i.e. what time we last inserted data into that row for that column. So we can run that query and we'll see here that we're returning the write time for the car model and it's different for every row as we wrote the data to that column at a different time. So another thing we can do in Cassandra is we can update the values for a specific row's specific column. For example, we can update this BMW's car model to something different using the update keyword. So to do this, we type update, we give the name of the table, and then we use the set keyword with the column we want to update, so car model. So we want to update car model and we want to set that equal to truck. And we want to use the where clause to specify exactly which rows we want this to apply to. So we want to say where car make is equal to BMW. And because ID is also part of the primary key, we also need to supply that in our update query. And ID is equal to one. So when we run this, the employee by car make table should set car model, this column here, equal to truck, where the car make is BMW and the ID is one. So we run that and this columns here for this row should change to truck. We can do a select again to see what's happened. And indeed it has changed to uppercase truck. So using this update statement, we can use a time to live or TTL. This provides the ability to expire data that is no longer needed. So in order to do this and in order to demonstrate this, we'll again use another update statement. So we'll update the table we want to choose, employee by car make, and we want to use a TTL or time to live in this case. So on our update command, we specify the TTL. So we want to say using TTL, and then we want to give a numeric value for how long we want this data to remain valid for. So in this case, we want to say the data will remain valid for 60 seconds. And then as before, we want to set the car model equal to truck, use single quotes, where car make equals BMW and ID is equal to two. So in this case, we should update this row here because the car make is BMW and the ID is two. We should update the car model to truck and that should be valid for a total of 60 seconds. We'll run that query. We don't need the quotes around the two as it's numeric. So we can run that query again and that should succeed. We can then view what's happened in our database. We can see that the BMW of value two has changed to truck. Now, if we wait 60 seconds for the TTL to expire, that should no longer be truck. So while we're waiting for that, we'll just discuss why TTLs might be useful. So they might be useful in situations where 
data is only valid for a specific period of time. For instance, a user on a website might be issued a validity token for 24 hours, and we only want that token to be in the database for a certain period of time. TTLs might be useful there. Now that 60 seconds has elapsed, we can do our select all query from the employee by car make table to see what has happened to the truck value for the row, what we have specified the TTL for. In this case, the second row here where ID is two. So we'll run the query again, and we can see that the truck data has expired and it has changed to null. So there is no longer any car model for BMW with ID of two. Previously, we had that as car type sports car. And once the TTL has expired, it doesn't revert back to its previous value. The value just gets deleted. So that's one thing to be aware of when using TTLs. So another thing we can do in Cassandra is we can have a column that holds a collection of data values. For instance, in our employee by ID table, we might create an additional column to hold all the phone numbers that that employee has. And because an employee can have multiple phone numbers, it's appropriate to use a collection here. A collection can be added at table creation, or additionally, we can use the alter command to add a collection or any new column to a table that's already been created. So the syntax here will be alter table, give the table name employee by ID. We want to add a new column called phone. In this case, we want it to be a set which is an unordered collection of values, but we could also use list, which is an ordered collection of values. And we want each value in the set to be a textual type. So we give text. And when we run this, we should have an additional column in our employee by ID table, which represents the employee's phone numbers. So to see that this has worked correctly, we can do select star from employee by ID to see the new column. So now we want to add employees phone numbers to the phone column. So to do this, again, we use the update statement, we give the table name, and we want to set phone. And then to set a collection, we open squiggly brackets, we give the phone numbers you want to add. In this case, they're text numbers, so we have to enclose them in single brackets. When we're finished, we use a squiggly bracket to close. And then we just want to specify exactly where we want the phone numbers to be added using the syntax we've seen before, specifying the entire primary key. So in this case, the primary key is represented by the single column ID. So if we just specify ID equals one, we should update the phone column for the employee where ID is equal to one and give it the new values 343 and 565. So we press enter and we can do the select all query again to see exactly what effect this query has had. And we can see that indeed, two new phone numbers have been added to employee with ID one. We can also add an additional phone number to an employee who already has phone numbers without overriding the phone numbers that are already there. So we can do this using a similar query to the update we've seen before, but instead we set phone equals to phone plus and then we give it the new phone numbers we want to add. So in this case, we might add new phone number 555, and we only want to add one phone number, and we keep the where query the same because we want to add it to the same employee, and we press enter. Again, we can see what effect that has had, and indeed, we can see that the new phone number has been added 555. We can remove phone numbers from an employee. In this case, we use the exact same syntax as before, but instead of the plus, we use the minus. We can press enter, and we can see that in this case, we should remove the 555 phone number from the collection and only the 555 phone number. We can click select all again, and we can see that the 555 phone number is no longer featured in the phone column for the employee in question. We can also remove all phone numbers from the employee simply by setting phone equal to an empty set or empty collection using just empty curly brackets. And when we run select again, we should see that there should be no more phone numbers for our employee with ID one. The final thing we're gonna look at in this tutorial is secondary indexes. So we've seen before that when we try and query data in Cassandra using something that is not the primary key, we cannot access the data. For example, in the employee by ID table, if we try and select all using select, star from employee by ID, where name is equal to John, this will not be supported and we will not be able to return any data.
we're able to support this if we add allow filtering to the end of our query. This will allow us to query on columns that aren't part of our primary key. We can see that we've now been able to return one row with the ID one and the name John by only specifying the name of the column. Cassandra supports this, but it is not recommended as it can be highly unperformant as we may be accessing data across a huge number of nodes in our cluster. Another way to do this without specifying allow filtering is to add a secondary index to our data. Again, this performs a similar effect and it is not recommended in Cassandra, but it is useful if we design our data model incorrectly to begin with and need to specify a query using something that's not part of the primary key. So in order to create an index, we use the create index on keywords. We then give the name of the table, in this case, employee by ID, and in brackets, we give the name of the column on which we want to create the secondary index. In this case, we want to do it on the name column. So we give name and then semicolon. We press enter and the index should be created. So we should now be able to perform the query that we performed previously without specifying allow filtering. And as expected, Cassandra used the secondary index to perform that querying, allowing us to query on a column that's not part of the primary index.